Welcome! In the last analytical chemistry video, I have shown you the essentials of the volumetric analysis by determining the acetic acid content in a white vinegar sample. That titration belongs to the acid-base titration methods of analysis. In this video, another type of method will be covered, the precipitation titration. Let's see some of its basics before starting with the experimental procedure. Also, I will be using scientific terminology which I explained in the last video. If you are not familiar with the word or phrase used, make sure to watch the video before this one. In this video, I will determine the concentration of chloride in a seawater sample making use of the Morse method, named after Carl Friedrich Mohr, considered as the father of volumetric analysis. The Morse method consists of the precipitation of chloride anion by the addition of silver cation, in which the endpoint is observed by the formation of silver chromate, which is colored. Here are the equations. Above you see the titration reaction and below the indicator reaction. Below that are their solubility product constants. The chloride in the sample, or analyte, is precipitated by the addition of silver ions, forming silver chloride, which appears as a white precipitate. As soon as all the chloride is consumed, the silver reacts with the chromate forming a brick red precipitate, indicating the end point of the titration. It happens in that particular way due to the solubility of each precipitate. Silver chloride is less soluble, which means that chloride reacts with silver first. Here are all the material needed for the analysis. Let's prepare all the solutions needed for it. First, I prepare the indicator solution. To prepare 50 ml of chromate ion 0.25 molar solution, approximately 1.84 grams of potassium dichromate needs to be weighed. I don't have a chromate salt, but dichromate can also be used instead with a little modification you will see later. Then, 50 ml of distilled water are measured in a graduated cylinder. It is then swirled for a couple of minutes until total dissolution, after which it is transferred into a glass bottle. The water is added in small portions to try to dissolve all of the solid without using too much more than the measured 50 ml. I am always amazed by the strong and vivid coloration hexavalent chromium solutions display. The last portion of water is used to rinse the beaker. After all the liquid is poured in, a stopper is added and the bottle is labeled. Next up is a standard chloride solution. Unfortunately, I didn't have a primary standard grade chloride reagent, so I had to use reagent grade sodium chloride instead. I put an arbitrary excess amount of it in a small beaker and dry it at 115 degrees Celsius for 2 hours to get rid of any moisture. 100 ml of 0.025 molar chloride solution is prepared by approximately weighing the calculated sodium chloride mass and recording the exact weight value to recalculate the molarity. Trying to weigh the exact calculated mass is not a good practice, as we saw in the previous video. Once weighed, the salt is dissolved in distilled water and quantitatively transferred into a volumetric flask. To achieve this, the beaker is rinsed several times to ensure all the sodium chloride is transferred. This is mandatory when preparing standard solutions, as this step is a source of analytical errors. After that, the flask is filled with distilled water up to the ring marking. Then, it is inverted several times to completely homogenize the solution inside. Now the last of reagent solutions, the titran solution. Analytical grade silver nitrate is used. In order to prepare 250 ml of silver nitrate 0.025 molar solution, approximately 1.06 grams of the nitrate needs to be weighed. Since I am going to standardize it afterwards, it is not necessary to use a volumetric flask, nor to weigh the exact amount, as before. Here I am measuring 250 ml of distilled water with a graduated cylinder to first dissolve the salt and then transferring it into a larger beaker. Since 
Silver solutions are not very stable in bright light conditions, so it is stored in an opaque container which was, once again, correctly labeled. Finally, the sample. It was gravity filtered prior to storage. The sample must be diluted, as it is too concentrated for this method. To do this, I transfer 10 ml of the sample with a volumetric pipette into a 100 ml volumetric flask. I considered using the volumetric pipette, and art by itself. I like to stand while holding it at eye level. With this, the concentration of the seawater is a tenth of that of the original sample, which needs to be considered in the calculations. Once again, the flask is stopped and mixed a couple of times. At this point, these are all the solutions that were prepared. From top to bottom, indicator, primary standard, titrant, and sample solutions. With all of these, we can now start the analysis procedure. First up, the standardization of the silver nitrate solution against sodium chloride solution. For that, a small volume of titrant solution is used to wash the burette. Once done, the setup is arranged and the burette is filled and primed with titrant solution. The tip of the burette is rinsed to ensure no extra volume of titrant is added. Next task is to quantitatively transfer 10 ml of sodium chloride solution into each of three Erlen major flasks. The pipette is rinsed with water first, and then with primary standard solution. For that, I am discarding a little bit of solution into a beaker. Now it is ready for transferring the aliquots. As said before, this was done in triplicate. To each flask, 40 ml of water is added. Then, 9 drops of indicator and a tip of a spatula of sodium bicarbonate, which raises the pH to about 8.3. In these conditions, all the dichromate is hydrolyzed into chromate ions, which are the desired species to act as an indicator. I rinse the inner walls of the Erlenmeyer to make sure all of the contents are at the bottom. Now it is all ready to start the standardization. Look how a red color develops first to then disappear due to the presence of free chloride ions. That tells us that silver chloride is, as I said earlier, less soluble, but kinetics of silver chromate formation are faster. As the procedure progresses, the solution turns opaque due to the formation of colloidal colorless silver chloride. But the most important thing is to keep an eye not on the opacity, but on the hue of the color. As soon as the slightest red color remains, the endpoint has been reached. Near the endpoint, additions are slowed to one drop at a time. And here is the endpoint. I added an extra drop by mistake, which is still okay since there are two more aliquots to titrate. In total, 11.4 ml are used. The value is recorded on paper and the process is repeated for the rest of the aliquots. Here you can see the formation of silver chloride after the red color disappears. For reference, here's how it looks when excess silver is added, in comparison with the previous one. This time, 11.6 ml of titron solution is used. Once we know the total volume needed, approximately 75% of it can be added at once, saving time and agitation effort. Here I am adding 8.5 ml directly. After that, the titration is performed normally.
Here you can clearly see the difference of before and after the endpoint. The difference is just one drop of titrant. 11.3 for this final standardization aliquot. After the procedure was completed, all solutions were disposed appropriately. Next thing is to calculate the molarity of the silver nitrate solution. We have the molarity of sodium chloride solution, their volume and the volume of titrant used for each aliquot. With that and using the equation shown, we can calculate the molarity of titrant as a mean value, where A is the volume of titrant used in milliliters. In this table you can see the results. The titrant solution has a silver concentration of 0.0251 molar. Now, the seawater sample. I use a pipette to quantitatively sample 5 milliliters of dilute seawater solution into the three urn major flasks. Then, same as before, 9 drops of indicator solution, a pinch of sodium hydrogen carbonate, and 40 milliliters of distilled water. A little bit of swirling, and we are ready to finally titrate the sample. Even though I estimated I need to use about 10 milliliters of titran for the water sample, I titrated the first aliquot carefully to avoid passing the endpoint. Once again, a blank is titrated to counteract the effect of the matrix. The blank solution consists of 50 ml of water, 9 drops of indicator and a spatula of both sodium bicarbonate and calcium carbonate. The latter is used to simulate the effect of an opaque solution. As with every blank solution, little to no light should be present in it so additions of titrant were done drop by drop. 0.3 ml were used, which is something to consider. Once the experimental part is finished, the concentration of chloride can be calculated. Above you see the equation needed to calculate the molarity of chloride ion. Notice that 0.3 ml are subtracted from the variable A to apply the blank correction. On the denominator is the sample volume and its dilution factor. By substituting the variable A we get the molarity, but other types of concentration values can also be calculated. Here I show you its content in grams per liter and its percentage, which are more intuitive. If we assume all the chloride is in the form of its sodium salt, we can say that 1 liter of seawater has 34 grams of sodium chloride. This value is known as salinity, and in my case it falls within the mean concentration of seawater around the world, which in general is accepted to be 35 grams per liter. Salinity is a really important factor that affects ocean dynamics. It can be tracked to predict climate conditions, melting and freezing of polar ice, and even evaporation of water and its consequent precipitation, among many other variables. Here I show you a video with data recorded by the NASA's Aquarius instrument mounted in the Argentinian Satellite de Aplicaciones Científicas de. The video shows the changes in salinity in the hydrosphere over time. In this video I have shown you a precipitation titration method for determining the chloride content in a water sample, but here you can see that with data obtained by chemists, or a satellite in the case of the Aquarius instrument, people can study many other things in a plethora of fields. So one simple chemistry experiment can yield lots of knowledge. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one and, as always, don't forget to enjoy our hobbies.